Hi there, and welcome to Ian's Engage channel. I'm Ian. In a previous video, I showed how some homemade track setter like templates had helped me to lay some Code 55 track. In this video, I'm going to show how I created the templates using Inkscape, the free vector drawing application, and my Cricut machine. Like many people, I've previously used track setter templates to help me keep flexible track straight or within a constant radius when tackling curves. However, while track setter templates are great, what I've always wanted from a system of templates is more flexibility. For instance, what I'd find most useful is a template that could be used for straightening up flexible track when exiting from the diverging lane of a turnout to bring the track back parallel with the through lane. It's always been a bit of an annoyance to me that a short curve of any radius will straighten up the track from a set track turnout. But with a streamlined turnout, these curves don't exist and need to be created from flexible track. While this isn't a huge problem, I've always found that my track work in these areas ended up looking inconsistent, which was a source of frustration for me. Of course, I don't have the equipment to create metal templates, but after the success of my six foot wear gauge project, I wondered whether I could create templates from two millimeter thick greyboard using my Cricut machine. It turned out that I could. So I thought I'd share the approach I used as it may be helpful for others. I should point out though, before I start, it isn't essential to have a Cricut machine or any other type of cutting machine for that matter as all that is really required to cut the greyboard is a steady hand, a sharp knife, and a lot of patience. Anyway, I'm going to use a situation I described earlier as an example, but the technique I'm using should work for any type of template requirement. The first job was to measure the track geometry of the point. In this case, I'm using Pico Unifrog points, and consulting Pico's website, we see that the turnout curve has a radius of 457 millimetres and an angle of 10 degrees. The next step is to measure the width of an actual piece of track setter, which will give us the width of the template that's required to fit between the rails. This turns out to be 9 millimetres. OK, so now we have the measurements required, we can open up Inkscape and start to design the template. We know that the curve of the turnout is 10 degrees and that the template needs to be 9mm wide. We also know that the radius of the curve is 457mm and that this is the radius that represents the centre line of the track. Therefore, if we take half of the template width, which is 4.5mm, and add it to the centre line radius, we get the radius of the outer edge of our template which is 461.5 millimetres. So let's create a circle with this radius. To get the radius of the inner edge, we simply take 4.5 millimetres away from the centerline radius. This gives us 452.5 millimetres. So let's create another circle with the inner curve radius. I'll use a different colour so we can tell them apart. OK, so now we have concentric circles. We can now use the arc tool on both circles to specify the angle required, which in our case is 10 degrees. and we're left with the segments of each circle. Next, we can use the difference function to subtract the inner segment from the outer segment, and we're left with a 10 degree curve that is 9 millimeters wide with a center radius of 457 millimeters. However, while this curve would be sufficient to bring the diverging lane of the turnout back parallel to the through lane, it would leave the parallel tracks a little too close together for my liking. I like to space my track in accordance with Pico's 6 foot wear gauge tool setting for streamlined track. 
This can be achieved by adding a short straight section to one end of the template. The longer the straight section, the wider the gaps will be between the parallel tracks. I found that by adding a 30mm straight section, we can achieve a track spacing of 26mm, which is what the Pico Way Gauge setting is for Streamline Track. We now have our basic template design that will bring the diverging lane back parallel to the through lane with the desired distance of 26mm between the lanes. The great thing now is that we can make the template longer if we want to, so that it can be used further along the diverging track. To do this we simply add another straight section to the opposite end that we added the 30mm spacer section to. Here I'm duplicating the template to create one with an additional 100mm and one with a 150mm extension. Once we have our design in place, we need to transfer it to the cutting machine. I'm using a Cricut machine, so I need to save the design as an SVG file and transfer it to Cricut Design Space. If you're cutting the template out manually, I'd suggest printing it to a sticky label, then sticking the label to a piece of 2mm thick greyboard. So, over in Design Space, once I've loaded the SVG file, I need to ensure that the dimensions are the same as they were in Inkscape. This may sound like an unnecessary step, but trust me, Design Space will have altered the dimensions. Once everything has been sized correctly, the material can be chosen. The correct blade added, in this case the knife blade, the cutting mat and material can be inserted into the machine, and the design is then ready for the Cricut machine to cut. Once the cut has been completed, the template can easily be removed from the cutting mat and is ready for the next step. I've found that with these templates that the edges can fray over time, so coating them in superglue will add some strength and prolong their use. I've also found it useful to mark the end that needs to be closest to the turnout. This is because the 10 degree angle is shallow and on casual observation, it's not obvious which way around the template needs to be fitted. And yes, I've made the mistake of placing it the wrong way around and wondered why my track work looks wonky. I've also found that when using long curved templates, they have a tendency to bend out of shape. So would suggest only using shorter curved templates, which hold their shape very well. Alternatively, you can strengthen the templates by doubling them up to make them thicker, which lessens the chance of them getting out of shape. Here I've glued two curves together and they've become much more rigid. Ok, so that's about it for this update. Let me know what you think. Would you find these kinds of templates useful, or are you happy to lay flexible track by eye? If laying by eye, how do you ensure your flexible track is laid consistently? Or doesn't it matter, and I'm being way over fussy with how I want my track to look? Alternatively, if you've got any hints, tips, useful tools or techniques to pass on to a beginner in Engage modelling, or if you simply want to say hello, then please do so in the comments section. Anything and everything you've got to say will be greatly appreciated. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully I'll have another update soon. Bye.